What makes you different is what makes you Spider-Man. My name is Peter Parker. I'm pretty sure you know the rest. I saved the city, fell in love, then I saved the city again and again and again. Look, I'm a comic book, a serial, I did a Christmas album, and a so-so popsicle. But this isn't about me. Not anymore. Spider-Man swings in once a day, zip zaps up in his little mask and answers to no one. I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know that. You gotta, you gotta say, say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I, I wanna, wanna hear it. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's, That's a copy. copy. Ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miles Morales. Brooklyn! I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. You ever hear the Super Collider? You're gonna love this. Dimension opening now. You're like me. That's impossible. All right, kid, listen up. This fry is your universe. It's soggy, it's weird, it's gross. And this delicious normal fry is my universe. So you wanna learn to be Spider-Man. Can you teach me? Yes, I can. Time to swing. Ah, Good, doing you're doing it. it. Double tap to release <laughs> and whip it out again. Okay. Whip. And release your natural whip. Hey guys. Who are you? I'm Gwen Stacy. I'm from another another dimension. How many more spider people are there? Hey fellas. Hello. This could literally not get any weirder. It can get weirder. Okay. We need to get back to our universes soon. Brooklyn is gonna collapse. My family lives in Brooklyn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miles, what's wrong? This was never your city. It's mine. If I don't destroy the collider, none of us will have a home to go home to. Remember, what makes you different... Let's go! ...is what makes you Spider-Man. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? That way, that way. Other way, other way, other way, other way. Do animals talk in this dimension? Because I don't want to freak them out. Fans are experts. Movie month. It's my sixth year doing movie month. 30 movies, 30 days, 30 podcasts that you get to listen to. Fans not experts, movie month. It's my sixth year doing movie month. 30 movies, 30 days, 30 podcasts that you get to listen to, including this one right here. But wait! One more time, fans on Express Movie Month. It's my sixth year doing Movie Month. 30 movies, 30 days, 30 podcasts that you have the pleasure of listening to. An episode is about to start right now. An episode is about to start right now. The theme song is fading out because an episode... Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web, any size, catches seeds, just like guys. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Wow. I, uh, can't believe this is it. I cannot believe that another movie month is over. This one feels so long. And I think it's because I was on vacation for almost half the month. And this vacation has felt so very long. From seeing movies in theaters, watching movies on the train when I was still working. Watching movies before work, watching movies after work, watching movies... Streaming them in the theater, as I said. Renting, taking DVDs from the library. I mean, and watching things on HBO. It's just been awesome. 
And this has been one of my favorite months because I went to the theater five times. I caught up on a bunch of series. And I have to say, when all is said is done, ugh, I have to say, when all is said and done, that I think, and it's only been a couple minutes since I finished this, but I really feel that I saved the best possible movie for day 30. Saving the best for last. You know, I was trying to think earlier today, you know, what was my favorite movie? What was my least favorite movie? Um, and I was like, well, maybe it's one of the Mission Impossible movies. Or, um, you know, I really liked Bone Tomahawk a lot. But no. No. Absolutely. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was my favorite movie of the month. Was the best movie I watched of the month. It's the only one that can say, Hi, we're an Oscar winning movie. Yes, the Oscar winning movie for best animation was my favorite movie of the month. Oh, a superhero movie that's a cartoon? I can't believe Mike liked that. No, I understand that. Um, I've seen animated movies almost every year that I've done movie month. And some of them are, you know, th big, you know, theatrical, digital animated movies. Some are these directed DVD DC movies. This one is your is a big animated superhero movie, and it was it's not just like the voice acting phenomenal, the story phenomenal, but really it was just something beautiful to look at. You know, I made sure not to watch this on a tablet, not to watch this on a laptop. I watched this on my television. And it felt like the movie flew by and every, every moment of the movie was interesting just to look at. Never mind the, the, the great story that they put together. Um, I, I would imagine this is my favorite Spider-Man movie ever. I mean, I, I've only seen, you know, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. I never saw the two amazing Spider-Mans and, of course, Homecoming and... I've said it before, Spider-Man 1 I liked, Spider-Man 2 I loved, Spider-Man 3 I thought sucked, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming I, I liked a lot, and the new, the new Spider-Man that's coming out like next week, I think, or something really soon, is supposed to be great, and I'm sure I'm going to like it. But this, this one was different. This is, this is away from the Marvel Universe. This is its own thing. This is, and yet it also kind of feels like it's used it like the world the you, previous Spider-Man movies we saw happen because the beginning of the movie was referencing specific things that happened in those uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. They might have been referencing something in the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. I do not know. But I, I, I can't say enough good things about this movie. And it's, it's your typical Spider-Man, Peter Parker, but then there's a whole lot more. Now, M Miles Morales, that is a name that is in the Marvel comics. He is someone that I just remember they're making a new Spider-Man and it was going to be a young African-American kid. And I just remember like, yeah, I, think, I don't know if it was the Ultimate Universe or it was, it was something. I just remember knowing about it, being aware of it, never reading the comic books, but just knowing from looking at various websites or listening to various podcasts. So when I saw that they were doing... Well, honestly, when I saw that they were making a cartoon version of Spider-Man, I think I saw a preview in the movies la in the theater last year or the year before, maybe. I thought, what the hell is going on here? Sony, get your stuff together. I mean, they 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 screwed up with the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. They finally give it back to Marvel to make movies, and now they're doing this. What is going on? And any anything negative, or I may have thought about it. I, I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. This was so much fun. And so unique and so its own thing. Like, when I say unique, by that I mean the visual style that we're looking at. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a CGI movie, but not like a Pixar movie. It was like sometimes you felt like you were looking at something real. Sometimes you felt like you were looking at something drawn. Sometimes you felt like you were looking at something computer generated. It was 
And and then things are focused, things are out of focus. Sometimes I'm like, should I be watching this with 3D glasses? Things look like they're double drawn, like they're they're like blurry. But it was all part of the style where things that you should be looking at are in focus, things that you shouldn't be looking at are out of focus, and that's on purpose. That's how your eyes work anyway. It was, I can't, I don't know what to say. It was ridiculous how good this was. Uh, yes, Chris, you, you, I don't think you overhyped it at all, and I don't think you could have underhy- underhyped it in any way. I, I just, it's either way, um, just awesome. Awesome, awesome. And I, and, you know, I think it's something kids would love, and I think open minded, smart, fun loving adults would love this. You know, um, let's talk about the movie itself. So, the movie has to deal with a young guy named Miles Morales. Now, he's just a kid who, son of a cop, who, um, you know, loves the town of Brooklyn, lives in Brooklyn, but he's recently, uh, went to a high school that is, um, it's like a, a board, not a boarding school, yeah, like a boarding school, like a prep school or, you know, a, I don't know, I don't think it was like a Catholic school, but a private school, a private school where you live at the school. And he's there, but he really likes to hang out with his uncle. Uh, he doesn't really like the new school, goes and hang out, hangs out with his uncle for a bit. And his uncle's, you know, his uncle's a nice guy, but we don't know. He seems a little like shady. At least the dad um, has an issue with him a bit. And, um, Miles and him and the dad and the uncle are like, come on, let's go hang out. And they go because he knows Miles loves to do graffiti. So he finds a spot where he does this, all this graffiti. And there we see a radioactive spider. Now the spider had a 42 on it and it had a company on it, um, Alchemex. And I just was like, I remember that because it was like one letter away from sounding like Malcolm X. That's, that's how I remembered what the name was, Alchemix. Um, earlier, we see Miles at school, and they're watching a film of a doctor talking about multiple dimensions. And I already knew this was like Spider-Man from different dimensions. So when I hear that, I'm like, oh, they, you know, they're kind of letting you know that there's a scientist out there who thinks these dimensions exist and needs um, all this funding to get this to happen. And it seems like she got the funding um, because... Uh, Oh, and she worked for Alchemex. And I noticed the number 42 showing up a lot. So I thought the film production was 42. Like, I thought that was part of the film at the beginning, the credits. I thought that um, when Peter fell off a bu- when Miles fell, fell off a building, at one point he knocks all these numbers off and four and two are there. And then later, I think we see 42 on the um, spider itself. And I wasn't sure if this means that we're on Earth 42. Is that, could I be wrong? I don't know. Because I know Marvel has all these different Earths, um, and so does so does DC. They have their own multiverse, so it's confusing. Um, it's super nerdy, and that makes it great. Uh, so he's at school learning about multiverse. I thought maybe they'd go on a school field trip, but that's what Peter Parker did. So then he um, is you know, spray painting in this place underground and the spider comes along, bites him, no big deal, wakes up the next day and he realizes he feels a little taller, a little bigger, a little stronger and he sticks to everything and there's some fun stuff where he runs into this girl. We know, I know it's Gwen Stacy, Gwen Stacy right away. Gwen Stacy was, you know, she was not part of the Spider-Man movies all that much. In the original three Spider-Man, I think... Bryce Dallas Howard played her in Spider-Man 3 and she played a very small role in that where in the comic books she was more Spider-Man's girlfriend for a while and I remember I think she died in an an issue or something I don't know but in this version this Gwen Stacy um, well we find out something more about her later I'll get there she's new to the school as well and Miles likes her and he you know he tries to like uh flirt with her a little bit, ends up his hands end up sticking next to her, sticking on her because he doesn't know how to control this, you know, super spider sticky power. Um, so that's funny. She has to cut his hand off her hair. But he starts realizing, oh my God, I'm Spider-Man. And he, um, he, what is he? He goes back to the place looking for the spider and he sees the spider. He's like, oh, this looks like a perfectly normal spider. It's all orange and weird and he knows it isn't. And then, 
bam, all this crazy stuff start, starts happening. He realizes he's underneath this lair or this company or this whatever factory. And who do we see but Spider-Man, the actual Spider-Man, Peter Parker. He's fighting... Um, He's fighting the Green Goblin, but it's like the Green Goblin's humongous in this one. I don't know why he's so humongous, but um, he's fighting the, you know, he's fighting the Green Goblin. And then you see like an introduction. He's like, hi, I'm Peter Parker. And I'm the, and for the longest time, I'm the one and only Spider-Man. And I like right away, I was like, I recognize that voice, but I don't know why. And it is Chris Pine. You know, he's uh, in all the Star Trek movies, and I want to hear it. I'm like, oh, of course it's Chris Pine. Now, I thought this other guy was also the same voice, but it seems like, and I'll get, you know what, Let's, we'll put a pin in that. So, Peter Parker is fighting uh, Green Goblin. He kind of gets trapped underneath because at the same time this is happening, Wilson, he's in Wilson Fisk's uh, giant laboratory which also has a massive hydron collider, hadron collider, which, you know, are, you, you, you always hear that and think, oh, when they fire that off, that's how they, they can get to different multiple dimensions. Well, that's exactly what they're doing in this. Um, but while they're firing it and testing it, Peter Parker's head gets stuck inside it and he sees he can kind of see something. We don't see what he sees, but he sees something. He's getting this information so that he can figure out a way to shut this whole thing down. He's about to do that, but instead Wilson Fisk comes up because there's an explosion. He gets trapped under some rubble, and Kingpin, that's who Wilson Fisk is, Kingpin, Kingpin comes up and crushes and kills Peter Parker. So Peter Parker is dead. Spider-Man is dead. And I was like, oh, okay. That's not what I expected, but okay. Spider-Man is dead in this universe. And there's a funeral, and Mary Jane speaks about her husband, and it's known that Peter Parker is the Spider-Man, and he's dead. And Miles feels really bad, and he goes to the gravesite one night because he, oh, he went out and bought a costume because he's like, well, I'm Spider-Man now. i got to get this costume. He bought a costume at a costume store owned by Stan Lee. It was Stan's costumes, and it was great to see Stan do a voice of the cameo, you know, rest in peace. The movie was dedicated to him. Um, he... Because Stan was gone by the time this movie came out, right? I think so. So he goes to the gravesite, and I'm sure I'm messing stuff up, but when he goes to the gravesite of uh, Peter Parker, all of a sudden this weird flash happens and another dude shows up, and it looks just, and Miles freaks out, knocks him out, and he looks just like Peter Parker. He's in a Spider Man shirt, and like, what the hell's going on here? And then he's like, let me tell you my story. My name, he comes to, and you, you get his origin story. My name is Peter B. Parker, and I'm from New York, and I'm the one and only super Spider-Man. But, you know, then it shows that he's kind of lost his touch. He made some bad investments. He, um, he's been Spider-Man for 22 years. The other Spider-Man that, we, that just died has been Spider-Man for 10 years. This guy's been Spider-Man in his dimension for 22 years. He's got divorced from Mary Jane. He's had some lost investments. He's kind of let himself go. He's become complacent and a little chubby in some areas. And this guy comes in, and Miles is like, what the hell? He looks just like Peter Parker, but he's older and fatter. So this guy is from a different dimension where he's been, I don't know if it's the future or it's just that Peter Parker was born younger. I'm assuming it's the future, but um, because I always thought that the multi dimensions everything is the same like it's 2019 in a different dimension everywhere but either peter parker was born earlier or it's a different year i don't know it doesn't matter what is cool is that it's the same peter parker but this guy goes as peter b parker but it's a different voice and i was watching the credits at the end this is jake johnson i don't know who that is and i don't know if that's if he's a voice actor and he just basically did a, a a tweak on Chris Pine or why they didn't use Chris Pine and just tweak his voice. But it's, it was very similar to Chris Pine's. I thought it was the same person. I just assumed it was the same person because they were both Peter Parker. But this was a different guy. And he was awesome. This guy was the... the see, the, the Peter Parker that died was straight-laced, white bread. Like, he's like perfect in every way. Uh, he was excited to meet Miles. He wants to train him. He is selfless and does everything correct. And this Peter Parker, Peter B. Parker, uh, is, and I wonder if that's like a Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan kind of joke, but he is a little um, just 
not he's just sarcastic a little doesn't really want to help like he does do the right thing but he's wise and see spider-man has always been a wise ass like that's his thing to to wisecrack but this guy's like, I don't want to help you. This isn't right. You know, he has to get kind of guilted into it. And he just, he's sarcastic. And it's just really cool. And what I realize is when he says, I'm from New York and I've been brought into this dimension, it shows that when the rift happened, he got sucked into this, to the dimension we're living in now. That's when I realized that the Miles Morales dimension that we're living in is not the world, the earth that you and I know. I think that's the one that Peter B. Parker came from. Because when we go to uh, the Miles Morales dimension, early on in the movie, his dad's a cop. And you see on the on the car, it says um, PDNY, which is weird because I know they call the fire department FDNY, but the police department is NYPD, but not where Miles lives. Where Miles is from, it's called PDNY. And then later, when the P- the new Peter Parker gets sucked into the world where Miles is, you see a... Um, a billboard for Steph Curry, and he's a professional golfer. So you see, I'm like, oh, this is in our world. This, And I think, and you see a, a different like Coca-Cola type sign, but it's not. It's a different soda. So I think, I'm almost positive that Peter B. Parker is from, well, Miles isn't from our world. Maybe none of them are from our, quote unquote, our earth. But that was just my guess. And it was just making me love this movie more when I started seeing this um this incarnation and then so what they realize is they need to get this the the file that peter parker had the information that he had to um fix everything or i don't know whatever it was uh got ruined miles was testing him trying to be spider-man and trying to trying to teach himself how to do things he broke the file and now the new peter's like well we got to go back in and steal it and they go into the break into wilson fisk's uh lair and there's the scientist from the video. She ends up ends up running into them, and she's not freaked out that she's seeing Peter Parker again. She's like, "You're older and fatter," because she's the one running the multiple dimensions. So she realizes you must have come through the dimension, and she's like, "I can't wait to see, you know you your your atoms are not used to this dimension. You will eventually will explode. I can't wait to watch it happen." He's like, "What?" And then all of a sudden, all these things are coming out of her arms and her back, and she is she is Doc Ock in this dimension. And I thought that was really cool. Um, I think Catherine Hahn was the voice of that. I watched all the... I didn't want to look up the voices during it. I figured, okay, I, I'd rather do it at the end because I don't want to be preoccupied with thinking of the, the people. I was trying to figure them out, but I didn't want to look them up. Um, so she's Doc Ock in this world. Still works for Phil, Wilson Fisk. I wonder, there's maybe Wilson Fisk's and Kingpings all over in different dimensions. But the one we're dealing with has this woman as Doc Ock working for him she chases them she cha- they're trying to steal um this file they couldn't figure out the password so peter tries to just steal the computer and he does it because i mean not peter miles tries to steal the computer and he does it because he he found out that he has the power of invisibility he doesn't quite know how to do it but he has the power of invisibility he also has the power of electricity that he that's how he shocked uh peter b parker uh, he did not know, that, but he does not know how to control it. He doesn't know how to make it happen. He just has it sometimes. Sometimes he doesn't. So he tries to steal the computer and the monitor. And that led to my, my biggest laugh of the whole movie when Peter caught up to him and says, he goes, well, here's the good news. We don't need the monitor. And he just throws the monitor back. And I just, it didn't even dawn on me. Of course they don't need the monitor. Uh, and they run off with the computer. And they're in the woods and they're trying to get away. And Doc Ock is there. And then all of a sudden, a third spider person shows up. This time, it's Spider Gwen. And then we get her her story where two years ago, she was bitten by a radioactive spider um, and she couldn't save her friend, Peter Parker. In her dimension, Peter Parker's just a dude, just a friend. Um, and he's the same age as her, I guess. And she got pulled into this dimension, but she was pulled into this dimension and thrown back a week. Or, yeah, I think it was a week or a couple of weeks. So something in her spider sense told her to get to that school, the same school that she ended up meeting Miles in, and he's the one who got his, he got his hand stuck in her hair. This is not, this, this is the same Gwen. I thought, oh, we have a Gwen at school, and then we have a spider Gwen. No, same person. And they try to, oh, no, they, did they get away? 
I think they got away. I don't remember. They got the computer. Doesn't matter. Doesn't all, all that stuff doesn't matter. Here's the thing. They, um, they realize, well, there's only one place we can go to get help. And they go to uh, Aunt May's house. Aunt May in this movie is an older woman. I'm like, I recognize the voice. It's Lily, Tom- Lily Tomlin. A very distinct voice. Uh, you know, Marissa Tomei is now the new Aunt May. Very different than the Aunt Mays we're used to in the past. Um, I guess, what was Sally Field, I think, was in the Andrew Garfield movies. Again, I didn't see him. So she sees them and she sees Peter and she kind of goes, oh my goodness, Peter, you're, you look so different and so tired and so old and a little chubby. He's like, okay, I get it. I get it. Um, but she right away is like, oh, is it a, you're from a different dimension? And they're like, yeah, come on, come with me. And you're like, how does she know this already? And they go into this shed that leads you down into the, I want to say the spider cave for lack of a better term. And, um, they were like, you think you were the first ones here? Or, oh no, she goes, you need these. And they're name tags. She's like, you think you're the first ones to come? And you look up and three more people come down. And then you get their, their different origin story. You get John Mulaney doing spider ham. Yes, spider ham is something from the comics. I'm sure it was, I don't know if it was just like a fun, you know, if worlds, else worlds kind of fun story with spider ham as Peter Porker, but they brought him into the movie. Then you've got, Penny Parker, who is, who's has a radioactive spider that is goes inside a robot that her father created. I have no idea if this this has anything to do with with any kind of comic book, but it's definitely has that Japanese anime manga type. So maybe there's a manga about Penny Parker and we dealing with her own spider robot. Uh, And the coolest one was the uh, Spider Man Noir. Who is P- he's also Peter Parker, and he is uh, all black and white. Talks like he's you know got a he's got to take care of a bad guy and then go out with a dame. He's completely in black and white, and he's very much like those old um, noir mystery novels. Again, I don't know if that ever was a comic book written like that. I'm sure there was. I remember writing, reading a comic book like called Spider Man 2032. And which is crazy that that's like, you know, 13 years from now. Um, And that was like, I read that in like the 90s. They always like to do different types. They take the superhero you used to and throw them in a different time. I've read Batman in the Old West. I've read uh, Superman in like uh, the Middle Ages, like the King Arthur times. So it's very possible that there's a Spider-Man, you know, done in the 20s. But the coolest thing right away when he started talking, I go, oh, my God, that's Nick Cage. Right away, I knew that was Nick Cage. And Nick, when Nick Cage wants to have fun doing stuff like this, he's so great. And if you've ever seen Kick-Ass, he basically does Adam West. He does the voice of Adam West when he's dressed up as a superhero. When he's a normal guy, he's just a normal guy. But he almost he puts on this affect that is just so good. Um, and he was great in this. And it was a nice surprise. I had no idea. I remember reading about John Mulaney. I didn't know who, was the, Peter Par- who the Parkers were. Um, but seeing... Uh, and I don't know who Miles is. I, the name sounded familiar, but I, it's a young actor. And Gwen is, um, what's her name? I just watched her in Beetle, in not Beetlejuice, in in uh, Bumblebee. I can't remember. Uh, Haley Steinfeld. So seeing again all those voices, I didn't know. But once I saw the names, I said, "Oh, I recognize that name. I recognize that name." But right away, I mean, it's very hard not to recognize Nick Cage. So they're all there. They're all from different dimensions. They're all like, you're like me. You're like, all their spidey senses are tingling. Um, and they realize that they need to go and do something. And I forget what it is. Oh, they're going to break in to, um, oh, no, this is what happened. The bad guys show up. I forgot. Oh, my goodness. So Wilson Fisk has this guy who dresses with a mask and they call him the prowler and he looks familiar. So I'm sure he's in comics. Um, I'm not familiar with the name, the prowler. I don't know the origin of it. And it might be in just in the miles Morales stories because it's actually miles Morales, uncle. He's the prowler. They, he tries to, you know, get this disc back cause they did get this, the data onto the little goober. That's what they call the little USB drive. They call it a goober. Um, they did get that information. Now he's there to take it back. There's all kinds of fighting going on. Um, and when all is said is done, the uncle finds out that Miles is this young Spider-Man kid. 
he tries to he decides not to hurt him and then Wilson Fisk shoots his shoots his own man instead Miles saves you know brings the, the uncle away and the uncle dies in his arms very much kind of like uh, Uncle Ben died with Peter there and it was funny because the Nick Cage character was like that's some origin story also Nick Cage's uh, character was obsessed with the Rubik's Cube, which is a cool story because he's all in black and white. So he's, I didn't even get the point where he's asking, is, is this purple? No. He doesn't know what any color is. This is like this whole world of seeing colors the first time. So the Rubik's Cube has all these colors on it. He doesn't know what which one's which. He just sees all these colors and he's fascinated with this cube. And that was a fun story, a uh, fun little side story. Um, so Miles... Um, is dejected with the fact that his uncle was a bad guy and he couldn't save him. And his dad thinks that Spider-Man's bad. His dad thinks this new Spider-Man's bad. Um, he goes and he tells, he can, he finds the other group, the rest of the spider people. And he's like, listen, you need to, they, they realize what they needed to do. They need to get back to the Hadron Collider. When it started, jump in, get everyone back to their dimension. But well, somebody has to stay behind. And, um, they're like, uh, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And, Pete, and Miles is like, it's going to be me. It has to be me. And Peter's like, no, it'll be me. He goes, you can't do it. You're not ready. You can't. He goes, you couldn't turn invisible when you need to turn invisible. You can't do your lightning when you, can't, when you need your lightning. You're not reliable. You're not ready. And I'm sure I'm getting this out of order because they end up going to back to Miles' dorm. Why the hell did they do that? I don't remember. I just know they go back to Miles' dorm. And leave him there. Maybe that's why they went back. Because, or maybe they went back for something. I don't remember. God damn it, I just watched this movie and I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because I'm telling you this plot like you haven't seen this movie. And if I'm telling you this plot and you haven't seen this movie, I'm spoiling it for you. And if I'm spoiling it wrong, who cares? But if you've seen it, you know what, how great it is. They basically end up leaving him behind. He, His dad comes to see him to tell him about the uncle. That it's a, It's like a kind of a heartbreaking, heartwarming moment where his dad says some really nice things. His dad is voiced by, I want to say, Brian Tyree Henry. Again, the same guy who's paper boy on Atlanta who was just on, um, I just saw him in uh, the friggin', seen him in a couple things. But he was just in the Chucky movie and he might have been in another movie this month. I've, say, I've said his name multiple times. It's, um, but anyway, uh, it's a touching moment, but Peter Parker wrapped him up in a uh, web, put a web over his mouth so he couldn't talk, he couldn't say anything. And his dad knew he was there because he could see the shadow under the door, even though it could have been his roommate. Um, he sees him under there. He's like, listen, son, I love you. And Peter isn't, I mean, Miles isn't able to say anything. And that was nice. But then when all that happens, Miles just kind of takes it all in, freak, you know, and goes boom and explodes because he's so angry and so upset. And then at that point, he um, he heads over back to Aunt May's house, and she's like, "I took you long enough." And he picks out a new Spider-Man suit, and he paints it black, and he does his own little thing, his own little, um, you know, spider logo on it because he's a he's a, a graffiti artist, so he knows how to do these things. And he turns him st- and he turns his a Spider-Man suit into the his black suit with red highlights over the white eyes, and he wears a hoodie, and he wear I think he still wears his Nikes. I'm not sure. He was wearing them earlier. Um, no, he didn't. I don't think he did. I think he's just in the suit. I love the suit. I don't know how close this is to the one that he wears in the comic. I thought he just wore a regular Spider-Man suit in the comic. I have, I could be completely wrong. But this suit just looks so cool. It looked like something a kid would wear. Um, and he, they all, they're all there. They all go back to the Hydron Collider, and then he shows up. And then the Hydron Collider goes off and just craziness happens because all these dimensions start folding in on each other and they're just living they're just in this weird soup of bubbles and, and trucks and cars and things from different worlds coming and going and blah 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 um but in the long run he is ready to save them all so he's like come on they, they think they took out wilson fisk they go come on everyone heads back to their dimensions and uh Phil, uh, Nicholas Cage takes the Rubik's Cube with him. Haley Steinfeld's like, we can be, you know, I'm a little, I'm too old for you. I'm 15 months older than you, but we can be friends. She takes off and Peter was about to, uh, was pretending to take off. He's like, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you with this. And he's going to fight Wilson Fisk, Peter B. Parker. 
Um, but Miles doesn't want him to, so they go back and forth. They go back and forth, and then finally he's like, "I got this," and he lets he lets Peter go and you know puts him off in his own dimension. Then he fights Wilson Fisk, and his dad shows up and he sees him there, but he doesn't know it's him. Long story short, Miles Morales wins, shuts off the Hadron Collider just in time. Everyone gets back to their dimension, and then we get a, a nice moment where Miles calls his dad, tells him he loves him, all these nice things, and then he puts his mask on, shows up as as, Spider, as the new Spider-Man. Now this police officer, his dad, likes Spider-Man, says, I don't agree with what you're doing, but I like that you're doing it. You're a good guy. And he tries to put on a voice. He's like, yo, all right, thank you very much. And he gives him a big hug, and I thought, I was like, you can't know yet, but I want him to know. I want his dad to know. You know, I love when people know. I love the reveals. Um, and he's like, look behind you. And he goes, I love you, man. When he said, I love you, I thought that might give it away. And he said, look behind you. And there's on a big uh, spider web, it says, uh, you know, courtesy of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. So we have a new Spider-Man in this dimension. Um, and then right before, you know, he goes back to his dorm he uh, talks about what he goes. Now he has his origin story. I'm the, you know, for the last couple of days, I am now the one and only Spider-Man uh, on, on, on earth, on this earth. And, you know, he's flipping around doing all these things. He goes, I finally uh, met my roommate. And now his roommate knows he's Spider-Man. I put stickers, you know, because he likes to put stickers on places. I put stickers where my dad can't get them. And um, I'm still doing Spider-Man stuff. And uh, then he goes and lies down, puts his headphones, his Sony headphones on, of course, and is about to go to bed for the night. And then you see the bubbles of the dimension open above him. He's like, Peter, do you have a second or something like that? Do you, can we talk? And it's it's Gwen Stacy again. So I thought that was cool. So it's ending where I'm, there there has to be a sequel. This movie did massive. It won the Oscar for Best Animated Feature. There's going to be more. And then um, I went through the credits real quick to make sure nothing was during during the credits. Then there was a post credit scene where there's this woman, looks like a scientist of some kind. You know, she's talking about the multi the multi dimensions didn't collapse on each other. And she's showing on all these like vid screens that here's the different dimensions we saw, the Spider-Man we saw. And he's like, cool. And he goes, now do you want to be able to go through these dimensions? And she puts something on this wrist of a guy named Miguel. I don't know. But he's definitely in some sort of futuristic-looking Spider-Man suit. He's like, yeah, let's – he goes, let's – she goes, where do you want to go? She presses a button, and then he ends up in – now, if you're, if you're on the – look, if you know what a podcast is, you know what the internet is. There's this classic meme this, that is used all the time. Um, when people look like each other, like on TV, you'll see this meme of these two Spider-Man, both in the same Spider-Man outfit, both pointing at each other, like you, me, you, you. You see it a lot. They, they use it on wrestling a lot when guys dress up, like if someone dresses up like someone else and shows up, or any time that someone looks a little too much like someone, um, and there are two people next to each other, they you, you'll see a tweet with those two, with the Spider-Man pointing at the Spider-Man. Well, they did. They kind of had a play on that with this guy Miguel. I don't know if this was just a joke. I think it's setting things up for the future. But he goes right into this cartoon where he's in his outfit, but they drew it like it was the old 60s Spider-Man cartoon. And he's pointing and they're pointing. And this time you're hearing voices because I, I never heard the original cartoon. But he's like, you're pointing. Why are you pointing? Stop pointing. And it was just it was a fun little thing the way they the way they did that. And then I just said the end. And, you know, we're going to see more. Um I, I I'm not doing this movie justice by rambling about the um the the plot. But like the plot was great. The idea was great. The characters and voices were great. And then you put on top of that just this super unique style that you know, it's funny that I say this as Spider-Man a million years ago, MTV did a Spider-Man cartoon where Neil Patrick Harris was the voice of Spider-Man. And I just happened upon one. This is before HD. I'm, I put this on, and I was like just kind of caught up and got really into it because of the way it looked. It had it had a weird animation style too, where it was very fluid, like it was like computer, but but it was just really unique. And I think it was on MTV for a couple of years. That's a weird time, weird weird segue from uh, from the Spider Verse back to some MTV Spider Man show. But I remember that really catching my eye. And this had that same kind of thing when it's. I mean, you can only do a cartoon in so many different ways, and it's still a cartoon. But 
when you do have, find a different way of doing it, so stylized, so artistic, like that, you know, it, it was not hyper-realistic. And yet at some points, things looked very real. It was, that's why it was stylized, because sometimes things just look like really, dr- really great drawings. Sometimes they looked like cool, like, you know, um, like artsy, you know, I can't think of the right word, but not, you know, impressionist, like not, they don't, they don't look real on purpose. You know, like it, it has, um, it's stylized and sometimes you see it that way. Sometimes you see it where it's just, you know, the faces are perfectly, you know, regular 2D animation. Sometimes it almost looks like, like, is this a clay face I'm looking at that was sculpted and, and, and shot with film? I mean, it never was that, but like sometimes Wilson Fisk's face looked like, it felt like you're looking at a plastic, you know, created face that someone painted and, and took a picture of. That's how good it was. Um, ridiculous. And I always love anime. I honestly, it's, it's, it's a small thing, but when the camera can, can go around things in animation, cause that's like, um, you know, and it, and it just feels fluid. Like you're really turning with that thing because it's 3d animated. It's not drawn to look like something's turning. You, you really are kind of going around this 3d model and, I've always, it just adds a smoothness to things that um, I loved. And this had that too. And I got to tell you something. It's 1120 at night. I have 40 minutes to finish this up. Movie month is officially over. 40 minutes. Can you believe it? And, uh, you know, I always talk about having a, a movie month after podcast just to kind of talk about the movies. Um, and I've yet to do it. And based on this week, I might not do it yet. I, pro- I might not do it again because... I'm back to work tomorrow. I have uh, back to work on Tuesday, and I have a couch coming. Back to work on Wednesday, and then I'm heading back to my in-laws for the rest from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ay, 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 ay. And I'm probably going to do no podcasting during that time. Stranger Things is coming back, and uh, the following Friday is when Stranger Danger will return. At the same time that I'll still be doing uh, my Mad Men podcast, I am busy and up to nonsense. But... My daily routine is going to be a little different starting tomorrow because for the last 30 days, I've been bringing these movies to you, bringing these podcasts to you, really just doing it for myself and always excited whenever I get a tweet, a like, a retweet, a like, uh, an Instagram like, and whenever I see someone listen to it. And believe me, there aren't a lot of you. You are a select few. Few unique, special, wonderful people. Um, but I've always done these stupid things for me. I, I mean, I was the kid with the video camera who made movies and then just watched them myself. Never, you know, I, it, when I was a kid, you couldn't post these things to YouTube to let millions of people um, have a chance to see things. It was just like, let's make a video, let's watch the video, hilarious, and that's it. So I've been, so essentially what I'm telling you is I've never grown up. And I'm not going to start now. You know, this is not the last movie month. This is just the sixth. I'm going to do it again next year. You know, I'll be back. Will you be back with me? I hope so. What I try to do, what I want to do, and every year I'm going to say this. Every year I do say this. I I want to do more geek mentality. Where At least do one a month where I talk about something. Um, Maybe not something specific, just general talking about things I've been watching and things I've been paying attention to. Um, I hope to do that. But if I don't, if there's only sporadic things, if like the next thing you see from me is Star Wars, then I, I can't believe you stay with me that long. That's great. Here's the thing. I do other podcasts and I do other podcasts under the Geek Mentality moniker. Um, or, or I shouldn't say under the, under the Fans Not Experts moniker. So if you like me here... You'll find me in different areas on the website. Um, And the Stranger Danger podcast, the Stranger Things podcast, was part of Geek Mentality. Now it's its own thing. So if you subscribe to me for that ever, head on to Fans Not Experts, look for Stranger Danger, and subscribe to me there. Or if you just go to anchor.fm slash Stranger Danger or fansnotexperts.com slash Stranger Danger, you will find um, all my episodes there. And there's no Twitter for that. The Twitter for Stranger Danger is Geek Mentality. So if you're following me here, you're going to see every post for every Stranger Danger. I hope that you find you, if you like Stranger Things, I hope you check it out. Um, And that is it. 
I, I am like, it's a weird feeling because this is like, it's a fun project. Um, and when it's done, it's like, wait, I don't have to watch a movie tomorrow. Not have to watch a movie. I don't get to watch a movie tomorrow. Or at least I don't get to watch a movie and add it to my list. Like, I'm actually not going to watch a movie tomorrow, which is weird. But I'm not going to. And that's the first time in a long time that I get to say that. And every time, every 30th, I'm like, wow, I'm not going to watch a movie tomorrow. That's so weird. But um, there'll be more movies. Movies are coming out every week. And I don't see a lot of them. But I will starting next June. But until then, movie month is closed, my friends. I had this whole uh, idea that I was going to take out my acoustic guitar and do a, um acoustic sad version of, This is my podcast. I made it. Geek mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. But I'm not going to do that because I ran out of time. So... Until next year, keep following me on Geek Mentality on Instagram, on Twitter. Keep subscribed to the podcast. Just subscribe and leave it to the side. Just leave it. I'll go all the way down to the bottom and you'll be like, wait, I subscribed to that. And then hopefully one day soon you'll see I come back up again. And you're like, oh, he's got a new episode. And he's just as handsome as ever. So thank you for listening. Thank you for staying with me all month. Thank you for staying with me for all these years. Fansnotexperts.com slash geek mentality. Fansnotexperts.com slash movie month. Fansnotexperts.com. On Facebook, it's fans and experts, but really, who gives a shit about Facebook unless you're over the age of 40? And even then, you don't care that much unless you want to go complain about something. And I'm, the only thing I'm going to complain about is that movie month is over and I got to hurry my ass up and get this up because I only have 34 minutes to go in this whole month of june so folks thank you for listening thank you for subscribing and for the last time this movie month i bid you adieu with a very special and by that i mean exactly the same version of my theme song this is my podcast i made it geek mentality is what i named it and i think you should listen and subscribe Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kind of handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this episode That's not experts